hello everyone welcome back to another video and in today's video we will be continuing from the same part that where we left before <clears throat> the series and parallel circuits the combined circuits where we have series and parallel parts in the same circuit right so in the last video we discussed about a circuit like this where we had a parallel circuit and in between we had a branch the second branch had two resistors r2 and r3 which were in series with each other <clears throat> we saw how to sort out the total resistance of this kind of circuits how to find out the current in each branch how to find the total voltage and the emf from the given values right so in today's video what we are going to discuss about is we are going to discuss about if you have a series circuit and there is a parallel part in that series circuit how do we sort that out so let us start with a simple basic circuit <clears throat> basic series circuit actually what happens here is the first circuit if you look at this you have a series circuit with three resistors r1 r2 r3 so we know the properties of series circuit if the current flowing through the circuit is i the throughout all the points in the circuit the current will remain the same so <clears throat> if you are asked to find the total resistance of a series circuit you just add them up 10 plus 60 plus 30 gives you 100 from there if you are asked to find the total current in the circuit how do you do that i equals to the total voltage which is the emf divided by the total resistance which is 20 by 100 gives you 0.2 ampere all right now next if you're asked to find the value of v1 v2 and v3 that also we know how to do v1 is equals to i into r1 which is i is 0.2 into 10 which gives us 2 volt similarly v2 if you multiply i into r2 i is again 0.2 and r2 is 60 which gives you 12 volt and if you find v3 again current is 0.2 multiplied by 30 which gives you 6 volt you add all v1 v2 v3 up it should give you 20 volt because that is the emf of the circuit pretty simple we know that this is how we solve a series circuit the same circuit we have just changed a bit the values are the same but the circuit arrangement is a bit different. Now let us see what happens when we draw the circuit like this. This is what we will be focusing on today and see how do we sort out circuits like this. So here <clears throat> again you have the same battery with 20 volts. You have resistor R1, R2 and R3. Now the circuit is a series circuit but there is a parallel part. The 60 ohms and the 30 ohms they are in parallel with each other right. Now how do we sort this out? Now, to solve a circuit like this, what we need to do is we just have to figure out which portion of the circuit is a parallel circuit here. So the parallel part is only R2 and R3. You see R1 has no parallel branches. There is branch between R2 and R3. So if I think of the current flowing through this circuit, if the current starts flowing as I, the total current, it still remains the same because the current has not divided into any branch. Through R1, the current is still I. But when it enters R2 or R3, the current becomes different. Let's say this is I2 and this is I3. When I2 and I3 comes out of the circuit, sorry, it comes out of the branches of 60 ohms and 30 ohms, they combine together and again give you the total current I, right? So how do we find out each of this current? And if I start thinking of the voltages, how do I figure out which portion will have which voltage? So V1 this is v2 and this will have a voltage v3 so we'll try to figure out each of them now the first step when you're dealing with a circuit like this is find out which two resistors or which two components are in parallel with each other so we know 60 ohms and 30 ohms are in parallel with each other so what we do is we find the combined resistance of 60 and 30 only because these two are in parallel what i do is i find out the parallel resistance of 60 and 30 ohms which is 1 by 60 plus 1 by 30 and you figure it out you find it out this will find out you find you will find it out as 20 ohms okay I'm sure how to solve this one everyone knows by now so the parallel combination of 60 and 30 comes out as 20 ohms now what we do is to find the total resistance we add the 10 ohms with this 20 because what we have done is we have found the combined resistance of 60 and 30 and we can think of it as a single resistor of 20 ohms because that's what it gives right 
60 and 30 together gives us a combined resistance of 20. So we can now think of the circuit like this that there is a 10 ohm resistor and there is a 20 ohm resistor which are in series with each other. Okay, so that's how you sort out the total resistance in a circuit which has both series and parallel part. All right, so let me revise again. You first sort out the parallel resistance together, find the total parallel resistance and then add it up with the series part that gives you the total resistance in the circuit. Okay, we are done with this part. Now, let us see how do we find the current and the voltages. Okay, so once you know the total resistance, you can find the total current in the circuit, which is I. Here, I is equals to the total voltage divided by the total resistance again. The total voltage was given how much? 20 volt. Total resistance we have found to be 30 ohms. So, which is 2 by 3 ampere. So, the vo current 2 by 3 ampere is flowing throughout all parts of the circuit, right? It's the same current through R1. Now, the next part it asks me to find V1. How do I find V1? V1 is equals to I into R1. Because you see through the voltage, when you are finding voltage V1, it's for resistance R1. And in R1, how much current is flowing? The total current, because the current has not divided yet. It's the total current flowing through R1, which is two by three. So I can use two by three into 10, which gives me 20 by 3 volt which also can be written as I guess 6.67 volts all right that goes for v1 all right now how much is v2 and v3 now in parallel we know the voltage across each branch remains the same so in that way I can say v2 and v3 will be equal whatever will be the value of v2 v3 will have the same value but how much will that be that's something that we have to find out. There are different ways of doing that. I'll show you two different steps. So the first step is, let me find out how much is the voltage left from the total voltage. So the total EMF was 20 volt. V1 has taken 6.67 volt. How much is left? It's 12.33 volts, right? Uh, if you are removing 20 minus 6.67, 12.33 volts. So where does this 12.33 volt go? This remaining voltage, who is taking this voltage? This 12.33 volt is given to both R2 and R3. So that means V2 and V3, both of them will be getting 12.33 volt. That is the total voltage minus the voltage of V1 will give you the voltage across each of the resistor. We should remember from our previous discussions that V2 and V3 should remain the same. So it's 12.33 volt for both of them. So once you know this value of 12.33, you can sort out the rest of the things also. Now I want to find out the value of I2 and I3. So if you look at the circuit, I2 is flowing through R2, I3 is flowing through R3. So we know V2 and V3, we should be able to find the rest of it. So we should be finding I2 and I3 now. So I2, as we discussed, is flowing through resistor R2 and I3 is flowing through resistor R3. We know the value of R2, we know the value of R3. We know the value of V2, we also know the value of V3. So it should be easy for us to find I2 and I3. So when you're finding I2, I2 should be equal to, I equals to V by R. So which V? It should be V2. Which R? It should be R2. For I3, again, we use the formula V by R, but V3 by R3. So we know the value of V2 to be 12.33 volts. We know the value of R2 to be 60. We know the value of V3 is also 12.33. And we know the value of R3 to be 30. So you divide this two, you should get the answers of I2 and I3. So if you calculate it, 12.33 divided by 60, it comes as 0 0.21. 
if we calculate the value of this one it's coming 12.33 divided by 30 so which is 0 0.411 amperes right so that should be the current flowing throughout the branches r2 and r3 so if you just quickly go through all the values that we have found out so far <clears throat> and check whether you can match the answers yourself and if you have any confusions or not so what we did is we first found out the resistance of the parallel branch which was 20 ohms then we found the total resistance of the circuit using that we found the total current in the circuit all right all right then once we know the total current we found the value of v1 in v1 the current we used was the total current why because v1 was the voltage through r1 which had the total current flowing through it then what we do is we found the value of v2 and v3 how did we find it we took the total voltage which was 20 volt and from there subtracted the value of v1 which was 6.67 volt and then we got the voltage 12.33 volt left so what happened to this 12.33 volt this was given to both v3 and v2 equally so we took v2 and v3 as 12.33 volt once we know the value of v2 and v3 we can find the value of i2 and i3 also all right so this is how you sort out a circuit when it has a parallel branch in a series circuit i hope the concept is pretty clear now thank you for watching the video i'll try to come up with more practice maths like this and try to help out more concepts of yours thank you for watching everyone